Hi and welcome back to Apple Cottage. This is Sandy. Today we're going to make a beef stock. Some people would call it a brown stock. I am using beef. I'm using the, actually the, what they call oxen tail. They're beef though, it's not the oxen. And we're going to make that step by step. Now if you haven't seen my video on making chicken broth, I will link that at the very end so you can just click it and watch that. Because I do a lot of information, a chicken stock is, is much easier or less time consuming, I should say, than a beef stock. Now I'm using about two and a half pounds of beef. To that, I need about three cups of the fundamental trinity of cooking. I'll link that video also. Now the fundamental trinity of cooking is carrots, celery, and onions. Now I've already chopped those up. When you're making a stock, your vegetables actually can be up to one to two inches. But I like them the thickness of about a dime. Just a personal preference. Now I've already started my oven. It's set at 450 degrees. I've put, um, the rack all the way as high as it will go because I want to slide that in there. I don't want to broil it. I want to just slide that in there and make it so that it browns will, real well. It will stay at 450 degrees for 30 to 40 minutes. I'll turn it every so often so that the meat is getting browned, the vegetables are getting soft and roasted, and the, the meat will send its juices out. So I don't actually put any water in my pan. I did spray it with a pan, so any kind of vegetable oil would work to spray it. So I want to move the camera down. So here is my meat. I don't have any spices on it yet. I just put, out of the three cups, I put one cup and just kind of arranged it around the meat. I'm going to keep it on this cookie sheet and I'm going to slide it in. Side note. I just got this beautiful knife. I was cutting the vegetables with it. Is that a beauty or what? One of our boys, Jordan, sent this to me. I just got it. Um, it's a Christmas present, but it came from overseas and just finally got here. But it's got a beautiful design in it. The metal goes all the way through, even down into the handle, and then it's riveted. That is a sign of a good knife. And I always like three rivets versus two. But this cut those vegetables like butter. It's just amazing. No um, pressure at all to cut. It's just beautiful. Now, of course, our celery ends, our carrot ends, the skins and the outer part of the onions are going into the compost pile. You could also feed your animals with that too. Don't throw them in the trash can. You want to use every bit of, so you don't have any waste. A side note, if you haven't watched the video on the chicken stock, never use the leaves of the celery. Now celery at this time of the year, I have to buy. Let's see how it has these leaves in here, especially if they're any amount of yellow, but I just make it a rule not to do that in my stock. These leaves, when it's cooked for a long time or at any kind of high temperature, can literally make your stock bitter. And of course you don't want this. So using about two and a half pounds of meat and the vegetables, and I will add a few other vegetables and garlic and stuff to it later on, it should make me about a quart of beef broth stock. So excited about this, the chicken broth I have been using all week. It has just been phenomenal. So I'm just gonna take my gloves because the oven is at 450 degrees. I'm gonna put this with the cookie sheet in on the very top shelf. Um, at some point when I'm turning it, I'll take either a short video or a couple of photographs so you can see it as it's browning. Here they are browning. They're just looking wonderful. Our meat and vegetables are just finishing up browning and I need one cup of fresh tomatoes. While my tomatoes are canned or frozen or dried, 
So I got a pint of cherries, scoop those out and it makes about a, a cup. And then I'm going to use this juice um, a little bit later and I'll show you how. Now I am a garlic lover. So I add probably more garlic than a lot of people. I'm going to leave these whole, but I am going to take the skins off. I know people that don't even take, they, they leave the peels and everything on, which is totally okay too. And sometimes I even throw these peels that I'm taking off into the stock because I can easily, when I strain them off, they're not going to go through and it just adds more flavor. The way I do my, my garlic is I lay it on the side, one of the sides, I take a knife and hold that and then pull. See how it pulled part of that skin off? Then I'll turn it to another side. Do the same thing. Hold it and peel that. So it gives me a couple sections. Now I've had this garlic downstairs for quite a while. If it was really fresh, it would just peel completely in one piece. It's fabulous. The secret with garlic is that once you've broken that skin, so it's like how I have the ends cut, it really does this chemical reaction and it really starts that garlic flavor coming to the surface and all through it. And I have found that it really makes a better dish or a stock or whatever I'm using it with. Now this extra stuff over here, that's just going to go into the compost. So don't worry if you don't get all that skin off that these little layers, it doesn't matter when you strain it, you'll get the rest of it. Now that was half of my garlic, that bulb. You could stop right there or you could add more. It just depends on how much garlic you want. Some people don't want a lot of garlic and they'll only use one clove. That's totally up to the person. I'm going to stop now. I have to check our stuff in the oven and then we'll be back. I just took it out of the oven. So I'm going to lift it up so you can see it. Can you hear that sizzling? It's just wonderful. So I'm going to take my wooden spoon. I'm going to take one of my gloves off, take my wooden spoon and I'm going to put it in my stock pan. Now we talked about this in when we you talked about uh, chicken stock, never, 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 never. This is like your mother or grandmother talking to you. Never use an aluminum stock pan. If you have it, throw it away. Seriously. It does chemical reactions with so many different foods. It can taint the way your um, stock comes out. Throw it away. Use it, plant a plant in it. But as your mother or grandmother, Nana, never use an aluminum stock pan. I'm going to move the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just picking these up and I'm going to put these all in there. Now, depending on the piece of beef you're using, you may get a lot of fat residue. You don't want that to go into your stock. Fat does not add flavor. Sometimes, depending on how hot your oven um, runs, you'll get kind of a glaze on the bottom of this pan that was in the oven. And I'm going to show you what to do with that. Now these, I don't really have much fat or anything. I'm just going to scoop all those in there. Sometimes you'll get that it really sticks to the bottom. That's okay. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that in just a minute. So our meat and our one cup of vegetables are in there. I'm going to throw in my cup of tomatoes. These were all little cherry tomatoes from one of my plants. So delicious. The juice I had 
I'm actually going to pour over into this pan that I had in the oven. If you don't have the juice of the tomatoes, you can always just use some of your spring water. I'm going to turn that burner on just a little bit because I want to get anything that's stuck to the pan, any of that glaze or anything. And I want to put that in my, in my stock. If you had a lot of fat in there, you want to remove the fat first. Now I don't use our tap water. This is the type of spring water I use. And I need to put in two and a half gallons. This jar is about three and a half gallons, so I don't have to put quite the whole one in. And I like to start with very cold water. So I had this in the garage. And I'm just gonna pour that in there. Just a touch more. I wanna make sure that I'm covering all the meat and all the vegetables. I'm gonna throw in four of the garlics. Now remember, we talked about, if you're not really such a garlic fan, only put one of these in there. But we love garlic here. And I'm actually gonna throw those skins in there too. If you had peppercorns, you could put them in. I couldn't find any peppercorns today. So I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna put a tablespoon of pepper in there. Now, as you can notice, I am never putting salt in my broth because as this cooks down, it will get more salty. And in fact, if you want it more salty, put in more celery. If you want it sweeter, put in more carrots. Now I'm gonna take and put six cloves and throw those in there. If you really wanted to enhance your cloves without adding more cloves, you could put a couple whole allspice in there and that would help with the clove flavor. I need about a tablespoon or so of organic thyme. Some people like to add a little bit of celery seed. So I'm just gonna throw a little bit of that in there. Now I have my burner over here with that pan that was in the oven. It's just on about a medium to medium high. I just wanna cook that just a little bit to get anything that was stuck on the pan and then I'm gonna dump that in there. I'm gonna grab my other vegetables that we cut up earlier and I'm gonna throw one bay leaf in there. If you can get a Mediterranean bay leaf, fabulous. I don't have access to that, so it's just a regular bay leaf. When you stir it, you don't really wanna break that bay leaf up, if you can help it. It doesn't usually. So now, I'm gonna grab those vegetables. I'm gonna turn this burner off because that's warm enough. And we're gonna finish combining everything. Now, if you had a turnip, Turnip is an excellent thing to add to this too. Just a, a side point. I'm gonna shut the video off just so I can grab those vegetables. Okay, I'm back. I didn't put them in a bowl, I put them in a Ziploc bag instead. I just thought it was easier, I didn't have to wash it. So that goes in there. So a total of the fund fundamental trinity of cooking, onions, carrots, and celery, there's three cups in there. I'm gonna put my gloves on because this little pan over here with the burner will be very hot. And I'm gonna pour that in there. See how I got everything out? I guess there's a little bit in the corner, but basically I got it all out. I'm gonna stir that. And I'm gonna turn it on high. I want it to start to boil as fast as possible. So I'm gonna Turn it on high, and I'm gonna grab a lid. I'm gonna put the lid on there too. When it starts to boil, we'll be back. We're at a full boil, so we're gonna turn it down because we want it to just simmer now. 
Now, depending on your piece of beef, you may get some bubbly gray matter like this. You don't want any of that in your stock. And different pieces of meat will give you more. This, not very much at all. But when we did our chicken stock, there was a lot. And we just use a strainer and we just scoop it out. Trying not to take the broth, just the gray matter. So now we're just going to let this simmer for about four or five hours. But unlike the chicken stock, we're going to put a lid three fourths of the way over it. So we're just going to rest that right there. So we do have some steam coming out, but not all. And I'm just going to keep watching it. I'll only stir this maybe once an hour. I don't want to really disturb it very much. I want the flavors to go into the stock, but I don't want small particles. So once again, it's boiling. We turned it down so we can get it just to go to a simmer. And we'll just check back, but it'll take at least four hours, perhaps five. Now the beef broth has been um, simmering for a long time, about four hours now. And as you can see, it's actually the, the liquid level has gone down by half. So now it's time to move over and we're going to be able to strain it. Just like the chicken broth, we don't really want to disturb the stock very much. So we're going to ladle it in. As soon as we have it all ladled in and it's been able to drip for a little while, we want to cool it as fast as possible. So because it's winter, I am just simply going to put it in this bowl. I'll cover it with a cloth, just like we did with the chicken broth. And I'm going to put it outside. Now, all of this inside here is still usable. So I'm actually going to make a bean soup. I'm going to so soak the beans tonight. And then I'm going to take all these vegetables, the meat. I'll take the, any fat off of the meat that still might be there. I'll add some of the beef broth when I go to do it. And we'll have just a wonderful soup tomorrow night. But I like to soak my beans overnight. I know there's a lot of you, a lot of you that might I'll use a, a pressure cooker to do your beans. I just like that slow process. There's my bay leaf and I'm actually going to take that out because I won't use that in my soup tomorrow. I got a package of beans that have 15 different kinds of beans. So that's what I'm going to use tomorrow. As this cools, the fat, if there's any in the liquid, will rise to the top. And as soon as it's really cold, I can just lift that right off with a spoon. Because remember, fat doesn't add flavor to your stock. So the last little bit with no vegetables, I'm just going to pour right in there. So I am just going to let that soak just for a little bit so it can just drain. I have four layers of cheesecloth on there. My strainer is in the bowl. Everything is stainless steel. So it will just be perfect. Nothing will react and it will be a great beef broth. The broth is all drained. Beautiful color. You can see that there's a little bit of um, fat floating on the top. But when I bring that from inside and put it in a smaller jar, I'll set it in the refrigerator. And after a few hours, that will all um, rise to the top. I'll be able to just scoop it right off. So it's just going to be a great broth. I'm going to take um, a dish towel. I'm going to cover this so that nothing, no dust or anything, since I'm going to put it outside, it'll just be perfect. 
the beef stock just came in from outside and I used a funnel and poured it into the quart jar. It looks wonderful. I'm going to put it in the refrigerator and right up here on top, I can see a little bit of fat grease. And so as it sits in the refrigerator, that will solidify. And after it's set there for a few hours, I will just take that out. So a successful day of making beef stock. I hope you enjoyed it. At the end of the video, I'll have a link for the, um, the chicken um, stock so you can make that also. So good, healthy, and a wonderful way to use beef, some bones, some vegetables. I am going to use all that beef that's left on there and the vegetables and I'm going to make a wonderful 15 bean soup for tomorrow. So this is Sandy at Apple Cottage. As always, like, subscribe, share with the world, and Tuesday morning and Thursday morning it's gardening together.